Hi, everyone. I'm so glad you're here to help me make this Santa cookie box. The first thing we're going to do is go over all the supplies you need so we're sure everybody has everything in front of them that they need. And we're going to use the 11,000 bead jar, which is one of my favorites, because even if you decide you don't want to use the colors that I use to make this, you can choose your own colors because there's ample for every kind of design you want to make. We also will need the two large clear pegboards, and they have to be the large pegboard because if not, the Santa won't fit. And then the other thing, which is optional, you can or cannot use the tweezers. I like to use the tweezers because there's a cute little trick where you can pick up two at one time and it makes it go even faster. Now I'm sure everybody has printed their pattern sheet. If you haven't, don't worry about that. You can print it later. Just follow along on the class and when you're ready to make your pattern and your design, you'll have everything you need to know to do that. What we're gonna do is we're going to, first thing we need to do is lay our pegboard onto our pattern sheet. And if we can just go down here on the table, you can see that I'm lining it up because it's clear. You see right through onto your design and you're able to start making your project. I have a tray with all my beads sorted. It's, a, it's very, very helpful if you sort your beads before you start, because that way you're not picking through the large jar. I'm gonna start at the top with thread. And you can see I picked up two at one time and just put them right down on the pegboard. Look at that, that cuts your time in half and you have more time to enjoy your project when you're done. This way also, if you're making multiples so that you can give them to friends or your teacher or your coach, or maybe like your bus driver, you'll be able to make plenty of them before the holiday comes around. Now I'm working here in the red, but what you can do is if you decide that you're tired of, of working with just one color for a while, then you can switch over and maybe start working on the cookie. Because you can always jump back with it being a clear pegboard. When you're ready to do red again, you just go right back where you were. And look at that, sometimes they do pop off. That one didn't want to come off the tweezer. She wants to stay there. And then let's go over here and do some green to fill that in and maybe some tan. And you can jump around anywhere you want on this pegboard, because like I said, it's clear. You always have your design right in front of you. Now we're gonna make the larger of the two because there's two pieces that can be made from this one pattern. And after we have this one finished, and iron, I can show you how you can make the smaller ornament to go along to make your gift even more special. Does everybody have a list of gifts that they need to make for people around them? So that you know exactly how many you need to do. See how easy it is if something tips over or it goes in the wrong space, you just pick it up and go right back where you started. This project has quite a few colors. So you'll never get tired of working in a certain area. I don't know if anyone has given any thought to what kind of cookies they're going to put in their box. If you have a favorite cookie, you can just let us know and we can share that with everyone and come up with an idea of what the most popular cookies are.
And then we'll go down here. I love this raspberry color. And let's go over and get some white. Put a few white in here. You do need, do need to pay close attention to as colors change because sometimes there'll just be one or two in a certain area in between a whole field of another color. So you do need to watch that you're putting the right color on to get the same, uh, same look that we have here. But like I said, you can always change and put in whatever color you would like. Some of this hat already. Look at how fast that went. Okay. And a few toothpaste. They have very interesting colors. Their names of their colors are uh, very, very interesting and fun names. We're going to work this down and you can continue to follow through and finish the entire you get down to the bottom of his beard and I'm going to show you one that I have been working on here because I'm sure everyone now has the idea as to how we're putting these beads on. And what I'm going to do Put that back there. You can see they moved a little bit when I was moving the board. And that'll happen also. Sometimes you just need to go back and recheck what, everything that you put on to make sure that you're in the right place. And now you can see we have Santa and his cookie. And we are ready to just put these last few down here at the bottom. And always be careful. Sometimes the, as you're moving it and putting beads on, your hand will move the pegboard. So make sure that you have it lined up on the design. And you can see you can do it one at a time also if you're more comfortable doing that. We're just about ready to go down to the bar that has the word Santa in it. Now you'll see that when you're down to get to this part, before you start that rectangle for Santa, if you want to make this into an ornament, then what you would do is you would stop right there and not go any further with your project because you have your ornament made. And we'll show you how to add the pom-pom and put this string onto it. But right now we're gonna finish the main part that goes on the front of your Santa box. I'm gonna spin this around because we're now into this really cool color of kiwi lime. And then a little bit of dark green. Here's where it gets to be fun because you get to use a whole array of colors in a real small space. And look at how quickly that's coming together.
that. I missed one. I thought I had one on my tweezer and I didn't. Now, some people like to use just their fingers to pick up the bead. And now we're back to the raspberry. And you don't have to, gee, if you want to do all the raspberry at one time, and then go back and fill in with the kiwi, you can do that too. You don't necessarily need to just work in rows from left to right or from top to bottom. You can go and work wherever you want. Getting a bit messy here. And it looks like we have the S done. Now we can move on to the A, which is dark green. And there again, if you wanna change colors, you go right ahead, whatever colors you think will look best for what you're doing and for what colors are your favorite, that's perfectly fine. Cross that A and go down here. Now, now they're getting to be a bit tricky. And now we need to do the N. And see there, you can see how the pegboard moved, but you just slide it right back into position and, and you can continue. You in my hand here, and maybe we can get this end done as quickly as possible. I know everyone's excited to finish the box and glue this to the front of it. We have just a few more steps until we can be to that point. There we go. Two more letters, and we will have the front to our box. you have an adult with you, it may be a good, that's working on this project with you, you may, may be a good time for them to get the iron heated so that this can be pressed. But do not try to iron these without an adult with you. And you need to make sure that your iron doesn't have any water in it and that there's no steam. Perler beads do not like steam. I have my iron heated so that as soon as we are done with this last letter, we can go on to ironing. And there you go. Santa is ready to be ironed. 
Now, I'm sure you're going to have to catch up a little bit until you get to this point, but we're going to go along and iron, and you can do yours whenever you are finished. Let me pull this paper out from underneath here. And I have this on a nice, sturdy surface. I'm going to take my ironing paper, and I'm going to lay it on top of the Santa. Be careful not to move your hand over it too much because it will uh, take the beads and move them off of your pegboard. And then you will need to start replace those where you were. And I'm just going to put this down and I'm going to slowly start to do a circular motion when I'm ironing. You go back and forth both directions. Do your corners. If you have an area that has a very thin where it's only two or three beads or even like the cookie that sticks out over the edge, you may want to be a little bit more concerned about doing that area just because it will have a tendency to break off if it isn't really secure. And just keep your iron moving back and forth both directions and you'll see that the, the ironing paper will start to, you'll see the beads coming through it. It'll become almost like transparent that you can see where you've ironed and where you haven't because the beads will start to fuse out. Then what I like to do is I like to take it, let it cool just a minute. I like to take it, take your board and flip your ironing paper over and then you can remove your board. Mine seemed to like it did not totally iron right there. You can see how that happens. Okay, then I'm going to take another sheet of ironing paper and I'm going to iron this side. And that'll catch any beads that came loose that you had to put back or that have moved or, and just in general to stabilize both sides so that when you're gluing it onto your box, it's not going to fray out or break. And we're going to take it, we pull the ironing paper off, and you'll see we have our, our Santa is done. And there's what it looks like when it's finished. Can we move to the uh, front version? There we go. You can see what Santa looks like when he has Santa running along the bottom, which is the one we're going to attach to the front of the box. And if you stop before you add that, you can see the one where you don't have it, where you can use it as an ornament. Now we're going to take our box and make sure you have it so the flap is to the back. And what we're going to do is lay it on its side. I'm going to use the glue gun. You can, If you don't have a glue gun or you don't have an adult to help you with the glue gun because this is also hot, you may want to just use craft glue, which, which will also work. And Get a little bit of glue on here. There we go. And just make sure you have all the outer edges and then take it and place your Santa on the front of the box. Make sure that the bottom is lined up so that you can see that you have it flush. So when it stands, it's flat to the floor or to the tabletop, I should say. And just give that a minute or two to hold. If you're using craft glue, it may take a little while longer. And then we're going to take a pom-pom. I'm going to use white. You can use whatever color you want. You could put green, you could put red, put even blue to match the toothpaste. And we're going to glue a pom-pom on the end of his hat. And then just going to take a little bit of tissue paper and our cookies, and we're going to fill the box with cookies. As many as you want to give. 
always make sure to save at least one for yourself. When the box is full, I just took my paper and then you can take your, your ornament, which let's add our string to the ornament that we have here. We'll put this aside and take a little bit of baker's twine and go through the top of the Santa, the Santa hat. There we go. And pull it up and tie a knot. And we want this Santa to match the Santa that we had on the, the front of the box. So we're going to take a little bit more hot glue and another pom-pom if I can get it out of the box. And we're going to glue it on there so that you have a pom-pom on there to match the one that you have in, on the front of the cookie box. And then we're just gonna lay that in on top of the paper, close the box, I'm going to put a piece of ribbon on mine, tie it in a nice little bow, and it's ready to give to whomever you desire. Thank you very much. Thanks for joining us. Bye.